Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox, and I'm the Compliance Evangelist, and I'd like to welcome you to One Month to Better Third-Party Management. This month, my monthly series is sponsored by Opus. Opus helps you to free your business from the complexity and uncertainties of managing risks associated with your customers, vendors, and third parties. By combining the most innovative third-party risk management and know-your-customer compliance SAAS platforms with unparalleled data solutions, Opus turns information into action so that you can so your business can thrive. Learn more about Opus at www.opus.com. This month, I'm going to take a deep dive into third-party risk management. I'm going to consider what you need to do to take a look at third parties, the due diligence you need to engage in, how you should evaluate that due diligence, what contract terms and conditions should be a part of your due diligence going forward, and how you should manage that relationship after the contract is signed. I think you'll find this an extraordinarily interesting and important series because, as all compliance practitioners know, third parties are your highest risk under anti-corruption laws such as the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act or the UK Bribery Act. This is Tom Fox. Thank you very much for listening to One Month to Better Third-Party Management. Day two, the business justification and the business sponsor. The evaluation in prong 10, third-party management, asks the following question. What was the business rationale for the use of the third party in question? The question is one of the most basic tools to operationalize your compliance program and should form the basis of your third party risk management process. It is common sense that you should have a business rationale to hire or use a third party if that third party is in the sales chain of your international business because it's important to understand why you need to have a specific or particular third party representing your company. The concept is enshrined in the FCPA guidance, which says companies should have an understanding of the business rationale for including the third party in the transaction. Among other things, the company should understand the role of and need for the third party and ensure that the contract terms specifically describe the services to be performed. Indeed, the, uh, the IRS also has uh, a similar view on a business rationale as an important part of any best practices compliance program. The lack of business rationale is considered to be a red flag, and indeed the IRS views such lack of a business rationale as a possible indicia of corruption. Obviously, the Department of Justice feels this way, but when you have the DOJ, the SEC, and the SEC all noting the importance of the business rationale, it is clear this is something you need to operationalize into your compliance program. But the business rationale also provides your company the opportunity to help drive compliance into the fabric of your everyday operations. This is done by requiring the employee who prepares the business rationale to be the business sponsor of that third party. The business sponsor can provide the most direct means of communication to the third party and can point to and be the point of contact for compliance issues going forward. I advocate a two-step approach. First is for the business sponsor, identify a business sponsor or primary contact for the third party within your organization. This requires not only a business unit buy-in, but business unit accountability for the business relationship and puts the onus on the business unit stakeholder to full, more fully operationalize this portion of your compliance program. Two, the business rationale. The business sponsor should then articulate a commercial reason to initiate or continue to work with a third party. You need to determine how this third party will fit into your company's value chain and whether they will become a strategic partner or they will only be involved in a one-off transaction. So what should go into your business rationale? At the most basic level, you should craft a document which works both for you as a compliance practitioner and the business folks in your company. There are some basic concepts which include the following. You need the name and contact information of the business sponsor and the proposed third party. You need to inquire into how the business sponsor came to know about the third party because there's a red flag if a customer or government representative points you to a specific third party. You should inquire into what third party's services will provide for your company, the length of time, and the compensation rate for the third party. You will also need an explanation of why the specific third party should be used as opposed to an existing or currently existing third party or other third party. This information should be written down and signed by the business sponsor. 
Another way to think about this issue is by considering the competence of the foreign, of the third party to provide the services to your organization. Such considerations would include a review of the qualifications of the third party candidate for subject matter expertise, the resources to perform the services for which they're being considered, and identifying third parties' expectations for your company. More detailed inquiries include the relevant business unit, which desires to obtain the services of the third party to provide you with a business rationale, including current op opportunities in the territory, how the candidate was identified, and why no currently existing third party relationship can provide the requested services. Your next inquiry should focus on the terms of the engagement, including the commission rate, the time of the agreement, and territory covered by the agreement, and if the relationship will be excluded. Remember, the purpose of the business rationale is to document the satisfactoriness of the business case to return, retain a third party. The business rationale should be included in the compliance review file assembled on every third party at the time of the initial certification and renewed as appropriate. Obviously, document, document, document at all times. So what are the key takeaways from today? Well, first of all, you should also always have a business reason for using the third party, which is articulated by the business folks, not the compliance folks. I often tell the story of a client who was directed to a specific agent in Ecuador uh, by the uh, purchasing agent of the Ecuadorian uh, Petroleum Company. I did an investigation of this agent, actually just a, an internet search, and it turned out that this proposed agent was the top retail flower seller in Ecuador. However, they had nothing to do with the petroleum industry or the energy space. So obviously this was a red flag. So what was the business reason for using this third party? It could not be justified. Number two, the business sponsor is a key or the key relationship going forward in operationalizing your compliance program through the life of the third-party relationship with your company. If there is one way to operationalize compliance, it's to have the business unit folks do compliance. And this is really a great opportunity for you as the compliance practitioner to do so going forward. Uh, by having the business sponsor involved, you can have touch points not only with the business rationale, but you can also have touch points during the entire life cycle of the relationship. They can meet with the third party. They can uh, perhaps even train the third party, at least give training into your corporate values. So the business sponsor is a key way for you to operationalize your compliance program. And finally, and one more time, document, document, document. You've got to document all of this in a file going forward. Uh, you have to have it available for a regulator who might come knocking. It's absolutely mandatory that you document all of these steps. This is Tom Fox. Thank you very much for joining me on day two, and I hope you'll join me tomorrow on day three of one month to third-party risk management. This is Tom Fox. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of One Month to Better Third-Party Management. If you have listened to this podcast on iTunes, I would greatly appreciate it if you would rate this podcast as it will help our rankings and help us get the words out on this most unique podcast series in compliance. Also, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me at tfox at tfoxlaw.com. This is Tom Fox. Thank you very much for listening to today, and I hope you will listen tomorrow on another episode of One Month to a Better Third-Party Management.